Hey there, my name is Mariel and I own two Bag of Ice ice vending machines. I just posted my first video and you may be wondering how I got into the ice vending business and why I'm making these videos. Well, I'll tell you, I'm a teacher and I like sharing the knowledge that I've gained with others. Plus, I'm really sold on this business. Um, I'm going to be buying my third machine this year, as uh, you'll see very shortly, the income screen speaks for itself. Um, you can see my first video for the numbers that actually show how much money I made. So this video explains how I got into the business and the reasons that might motivate someone like you to get into it as well. Okay, so I'm a teacher and I have a decent job, a decent salary. I just wanted to have a little extra money coming in to pay those bills that always seem to pop up unexpectedly, to buy extra for the kids when I needed, and to go on a well-deserved vacation and not come home feeling guilty that I've got a big credit card bill waiting for me. So I have a friend that has a convenience store and he purchased a machine for himself. He was telling me how much money he was making in extra profit, so being the teacher I was, I wanted to educate myself and see if it would be a right fit for me. I called around a few companies and eventually talked to my salesman, Brad, at Bag of Ice. He was so informative and I really didn't feel like he was trying to sell me something. I felt like he was trying to educate me and I could tell that he wanted me to make a decision that was right for me, whether it was buying right then or later. And I really liked that. He sent me what they call a pro forma. I had vaguely heard of pro formas, but I really didn't understand exactly what they did or how they worked. So when I first got it, it was pretty overwhelming. But it made sense once Brad explained it to me. I simply had to enter my assumptions. For example, how much the machine cost, what I was going to sell ice for, expenses, how many bags I thought I was going to sell, and a few other details and it would give me estimates on the probability of my machines. So I played with it for a while and the numbers were amazing. Here's the performer that I played with and I'm gonna take you through a couple of steps. Um, one of the machines I bought was really small. Um, it's called a 300 and it has a 901 Hoshisaki ice maker. I'll talk about ice and ice makers in another video but Brad was very informative when it came to helping me learn about those. Um, much more important than you think, the ice and the ice maker itself. So back to the pro forma. Here I entered the price for the machine along with the delivery and setup fee. I finance machines through a finance company and my credit's okay so I got an okay rate. Um, it really didn't matter in the end as the ROI, the return on investment each year, as you will see, was so high that a few points on the interest rate really meant nothing in the long term. I just wanted those machines. Here I entered my bag price and how many bags that I thought I would sell. Um, I ended up buying two different models, one that vends only 10 pound bags and the other that multi vends. In other words, it sells 10, 16, and 20 pound bags. Um, for that machine, I priced them like you do with the movies, uh, three, four, and five dollars a bag. This isn't typical. Um, most people price their bags around two to three dollars, but my locations are at vacation locations, so I felt I could justify the higher price. Um, there's also a place on this pro forma for water vending, but since I was putting these machines in vacation locations, I didn't need water bending, so you'll see that it's a zero here. Next, I entered my expenses. For both machines, liability insurance combined is about $500 per year. I pay rent based on a percentage of sales. In particular, I made deals for rent where the location owners get 20% of the gross profits after I've sold a certain number of bags, and that's every six months. In addition, my utilities are included in that rental rate, which is great. I know some people pay a fixed rental rate, but I hedged my bet so that if I had a bad week or month, I wouldn't be paying to keep my machine there. I've heard people have fixed rents of anywhere from eighty to three and four and five hundred dollars or more for a month. 
I also entered a tax rate and maintenance. And just to let you know, my maintenance was a little high in the beginning because I had to buy supplies. Now I simply buy bags and filters as needed. I clean the machine myself. You don't have to. Um, a Hoshisaki ice maker person can do it. They are all over the world. I did get a scale filter, which makes it easier to clean the plates in the ice maker. But you'll see my other video on choosing options to see why I picked the ones I did. And I'll give you my opinion of what I think is worth it and what is not. I created business which involved creating an LLC with a state. You could also do an S-Corp, but I thought I was going to have a partner initially. I then filed paperwork with the IRS and got a tax ID number. Then got a bank account, registered to pay a sales tax with the state, and found out about my state regulations, which mostly involved phone calls and some paperwork. And just to let you know, ice and water may have two different sets of regulations depending on where you're selling. And here's my bottom line. Funnily enough, my numbers that I got this year matched almost perfectly from what I had estimated. Now, my profits are seasonal, with most money coming in during the summer months, and there's a place in the performa to adjust for that. Of course, I didn't really know how much ice it was going to sell in the beginning, so I was conservative, and there were a lot more steps that I had to do, but I decided that if I could find a location that was right for me, with the terms I could live with, then why not? Um, Brad had explained that the machines that I was interested in can be pretty, pretty easily moved with a forklift and a flatbed truck if the location I was at was a bust. Um, on the other hand, if I kept running out of ice, I could simply add another machine, just buy another machine. Or if I picked a model that was expandable, I could add another ice maker. Um, at first I wanted the biggest bash machine there was, but he explained to me that that was silly. Buy conservatively, he said, then expand if needed. And that was very smart. I liked that idea. I spent less to begin with, and I'm making great money. If you see my first video, you'll see how each machine performed. My first machine didn't do as well as the second one, so I'm moving my first machine to another location. I'll update you with those results in a few months. Um, I hope you learned something, and happy profit hunting!